Hi, I'm Martha Munizzi, and welcome to the Martha Munizzi podcast, where we talk about all kinds of things. We talk about worship. We talk about leadership. We talk about family. We talk about health, fashion. Um, I've got guests that come on. We talk about so many different things that has to do with ministry or life, just whatever we want to talk about. We talk about on this podcast. And I'm so glad that you're joining me again today. I'm excited because I do have a special guest with me today, and that is my daughter, Nicole Munizzi. Yay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> my husband and I, we have three children. Nicole is our middle daughter, yes. and we just love her. She's so much fun. Her middle name Aww. is Joy. Yes, it is. And she personifies Joy. She's the, the loudest <laughs> laugher in the house. Oh, gosh. <laughs> She's the loudest person in the house. Uh, so, okay, she, only only sometimes. No, I've toned it down. All the time. Okay. And all right. um, Whatever. she was gone for two and a half years to mm-hmm. school, and we were all bored. We were all like, it's Aww. so quiet around here. When she came back, <laughs> she's just loud and fun. And and uh, so I'm glad that she's joining with me today. I hope we can get through this without, you know. Just laughing our heads off. Oh, yeah. No, we're going to have a great time because, um, you know, we're, we're going to talk about some things that we've walked through. But we, yeah. what we're going to really talk about today is our brand new album. And it's called Best Days. Best Days. And I'm really, really excited about it because we collaborated together, your sister Danielle, Mm -hmm. you and myself, and then our producer David Outing, we all collaborated and we wrote eight songs and we did a live recording in 30 days. Yeah. It's incredible. It's insane. Put it's a team together. Impossible. And we did it. <laughs> of elite, elite musicians and right. singers. Seriously. Like the best of the best. And yeah. I kept saying, guys, let me at least try to match y'all. Like, don't go so far ahead of me <laughs> that I can't match you. But I'm telling you, it was such a great experience. Yeah, it really I was. can't wait for everybody to hear the songs. I know. Um, I know right now we have Fight For Me and we have uh, Glorious 2.0, I'm Gonna Win. I hope you're loving those songs. Mm-hmm. And But I want to talk to my middle girl today, Nicole, and... And I want her to share a little bit about, I'm going to ask you some questions if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, because, you know, you grew up, uh, your older sister, Danielle, she and I have written together a lot. Danielle has really played so many roles yeah. in our ministry, in our family, just whatever needed to, to be done, she did it. Yeah. You were a, a part of that. She kind of was like the oldest sister, you know, she was kind of telling everybody where they needed to be and she all that. the responsible one, making yeah. sure. Yeah. Driving you to school. We all had what we needed, yeah. Yeah, and you were that that middle middle child that kind of kept everybody at peace, you know, we were like peaceful and kind of broke up all the fights and or I tried, tried. To, yeah, or tried to say, but you need to see their side and they need to see your side and you are yeah. such a peacemaker. Yes. In a lot of ways and uh, but she can speak her mind as well. She can speak her <laughs> truth and she's one of those people she doesn't just jump on your side cuz she loves you. She jumps on truth side. I and try. we'll tell she does. So I, I hate it and I love it at the same time. Uh, because <laughs> you she will be tell fair. you, you just got to be, be fair. Even. You got to be fair. She's kind of like her mama that way, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you know when we were preparing for this album, we didn't really know at the beginning that it was going to be a record. We yeah. thought we were going to write one song for our anniversary for our church. Shout out Epic Life Church. We love Ooh. our Epic Life Church family. If you're watching, listening, we love you guys. Love you. We started a church about six years ago here in Orlando, Florida, and we were having a ball. And Nicole, yeah. just side note here, she uh, runs our worship team, heads up our worship team, heads up our kids' ministry. You know how it is when you start a church, <laughs> everybody got to do something, and she does yep. such a great job. So, yes, But she it. helped the, the team write on this record. We really made a great team writing for this record, and one day... I'm going to stop talking in just a second, but give no, me one second. I got to start this up. <laughs> uh, one day we were, we were in the writing process and I was, I was in the kitchen in my house and I was opening up the refrigerator, reset this moment for you. And I could hear Nicole upstairs singing this chorus, this song, this melody, these words. And I said, <laughs> in the name of Jesus, Jesus, please <laughs> let that be an original song because it sounded like something that you'd heard on one of the, you know, the top gospel or praise and worship albums. It really did in my mind. I know I'm bragging on her, but it, I, it's true. I really thought- You're bragging on God. Yes. Holly. <laughs> but I really did. I said, let that please, because I'd never heard it before. Please let that be original. But then I had this second thought. She's going to come downstairs and go, oh, that's the new, you know, latest from whoever the biggest artists are or whoever it is. And then I was going to go, okay. So she comes walking downstairs, walks over to me, and you were almost shaking. And yeah. you said, mom, I just wrote this song. God just literally gave it to me. And 
she sang it again to me and I said, I was praying that it was original. And I, I don't know, but I think it's one of my favorites on this whole record. Thank and it's a song so called Everything You Do Is a Blessing. Mm -hmm. So I want you to talk about it a little bit because songwriting, there's probably people listening that are songwriters or want to be a songwriter. Yeah. And how do you write songs? I get a lot of questions. Where do I start? Who do I work with? What do I do? Yeah. So talk a little bit about, you know, tell us a little bit about your background and then just tell us about your process of songwriting. Yeah, so it's it's interesting because growing up, of course, my family was, you know, super musical. Um, and Danielle got the writing bug pretty early on, mm -hmm. but I didn't. I wanted to, and I wanted to kind of like, I wanted to be Hannah Montana. <laughs> um, like, true story, I yeah. did. But I never really, like, felt like that was a natural talent of mine. I loved uh, writing in my journal, my diary. But um, when it came to songwriting, I just felt like I was never really that good. It was hard for me to really feel like it, like I was really clicking with any song yeah. that I was writing. And so it took me until, like, I think I wrote my first song at like 17. And back then I thought it was amazing. And it's, it's just not. Um, <laughs> and then like, it after, was to me. I thought it was great. It was whatever. It's, you know, I was 17. So Right. It was about a boy. Um, <laughs> but so from like 17 to, I mean, honestly, like maybe 22, 23, I was still kind of um, writing here and there. But I don't know, like I just, again, I just, I didn't feel like I had the bug like Danielle had, like my mom had, you know, and I was super happy for them, like writing for, um, you know, Anthony Evans and writing mm -hmm. for other artists and stuff like that. Um, was never even really jealous. Like I was just happy that they were, like getting these opportunities. And I was like, okay, if, if one day, if I start writing songs, you know, that'd be cool. But if not, you know, <laughs> you were fine, whatever, right. I'm fine. Like I'll keep trying, I'll keep working towards it. Um, but anyway, so it took me a second to really get to that point. Um, and I think maybe like 22 or 23 was when I really started to invest in, I mean, I was starting to read a lot more. Um, I was really just like even becoming obsessed with the Bible. And um, when I started digging even deeper into the word, that's when God started to just give me songs, like literally yeah. download songs. And it was weird because, you know, when you write a song, you think it's really great. And then when you show other people, they're yeah. like, yeah, uh, okay. Oh, yes. And I think those moments like did happen. Like there were some moments, like songs I felt like were downloaded, but even still like they could right. have been a little bit better. Um, but it was just a really cool process. And um, over the last few years, moments like that have just kept happening. I'll be sleeping and literally like a chorus will pop up in my head and I wake up and I'm like, Oh my gosh, what is this? <laughs> and um, so I've been really just trying to just ask God for more of those moments because I just, I hate feeling like I'm striving right. for a song right. or I'm striving to get this lyric out. When I, whenever I feel that way, I'd rather just like, just kind of pause and be like, you know what? If it's not happening now, that's totally fine. Yeah. Um, because the way you brought me this chorus is, you know, I'm believing that you can bring the verse as right, well in right. this way. Um, and so I think- Anyway, so like the way that those moments have been happening over the last few years, it's just been really cool. And that is what happened with everything you do. Yeah, everything That's, you do. What I love about this song is just the whole idea of it, the theme, everything you do is a blessing. And the chorus goes on to say, when you give and take away. Yeah. Um, and, and that kind of threw me for one second because <laughs> I'm a believer that, you know, every good gift comes from above and yeah. God doesn't take anything from us. And, but the more I studied it, cause one of the things about all the lyrics that we write, whoever writes for our songs, I research, I study, I make sure it lines up with yes, scripture. That's important. Yes. <laughs> and if it doesn't, we're changing it. Yeah. And we want to make sure that theologically it's sound yeah. because people are going to be singing this for generations, hopefully for years for ho hopefully they will. Yeah. And we want to make sure that they're they're what they're declaring and singing lines up with scripture. And the more I read about it, prayed about it, the more I realized there are things that God does remove from our lives. He yes. removes wrong relationships. He might remove um, jobs or opportunities, things that seem like loss, yeah. but actually is so that he can give us more. Yeah. So that's why this song, Everything You Do is a Blessing When You Give and Take Away, yeah. is really true. If, if we'll just lean on that, we'd be happier all the time. Like if, we, if you lost your job after 20 years and you're like, what do I do? 
Yeah. S- just trust that there's something better coming. It's yeah. not just being, you know, goofy positive. It's really, truly, which I've been accused of. It's really, <laughs> it's really, truly just trusting what God's word says. God's yeah. going to do something greater. Everything he does is to bless us. Yeah. It's to get us in position to, to where he wants us to be, to bless us. Yeah. And I don't necessarily just mean monetary. People get upset about that. But I mean, so that you live a blessed life. He said, I've come. Spiritually, emotionally, you know, and there's so many other yeah. ways that he blesses us. I've come us. to give you life and yeah. give it to you more abundantly. Yeah. Abundant life. That's what blessing is. Yeah. And we just have to recognize it when it's there. And yeah. I love this song. Everything you do is a blessing. When you give and take away, the righteous are never forsaken you are good in all your ways. Yeah. I was like, let me throw something across <laughs> the room because that right there is just something we should be declaring. The righteous are never forsaken. Yeah. The righteous are, God, you're good in all your ways. And then you went on to put, we put the verse, you guys finished. I don't even think I wrote on this song. You, I was trying to take the bridge, I think. Did I? Yes, Okay, I took a little credit. Absolutely. But it was- You started preaching to us about what we needed, how we need to like really start to declare. And that's- My pain is a blessing. My joy is a blessing. Don't give it away. I'm sorry. Well, no. You use it all to bless me. (laughs) No, there's more. And and we really can't wait for you to hear the song. Right. And, you know, like you're saying- you know, every line of the, of the chorus specifically is a declaration. Yes. And it's like, so they're, they're kind of connected, but they're kind of not like, they're almost like all new yeah. statements in a way. Um, everything you do is a blessing when you give and take away. Cause we know, and we believe yes. the righteous are never forsaken That's right. and you are good in all your ways. And, you know, sometimes like you're saying, when we, um, when we ask God for something new, sometimes I think we forget that he, in order to get something new, sometimes we have to get rid of yeah. the old thing. Make and, room for blessing. And sometimes we don't know how to get rid of the old yeah. thing and God kind of has to force it out of our yes. lives. And that's good, Nicole. It's true. Cause I hate those moments, but they're just very real. Right. And <laughs> you've got to, you've got to be willing to say, okay, God, you know, you go ahead and take it. This yeah. hurts. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, this, this thing I've been holding on to, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job, um, a mindset, a way of thinking, a way of living, yeah. you know, that's all I'm used to. That's all that I've, that's really all I know. And God is saying, okay, but I want to change this. And yeah. I want to, I want to start to illuminate some new things to you and show you new ways of, you know, whatever. And, but that requires, a sacrifice that requires you being willing to say, okay, God, I'm going to give this to you. This feels like loss. This feels like major, major loss. And that's, that's when that I wrote that chorus and I I don't even, I can't even say that I wrote it because it really just was a download. Like hand on the Bible. That's it. That's what happened. I was in my room and it just came to me. And so, um, but it did come in a season of a lot of loss and where I was just like, God, you know, I know you're, I know you love me. I know you care about me, (laughs) but I am feeling so like empty right now. And I feel so discouraged. And so like, I I can't, I don't even know what, what, I don't even know what to do. Like, I just feel so, it was just, you know, COVID has been kind of crazy. And, um, and so anyways, when that, that chorus came, if, if it didn't bless anyone else, if, if it wasn't going to bless anyone else, it blessed me. That's right. And it's been blessing me just singing it to myself. I literally, it's a, it's, it's declarations that I sing and speak over, over my life. Um, and it's just a great way to kind of snap out of like, if you're in a bad mood or if something happens or, you know, whatever. Yeah. God, everything you do is a blessing. Literally, even every when you, single- even when things are removed out of my life, yes. it's because you want to bless me. Yes. But aren't they, it, it, wouldn't it be true? I know I did a inter- we, I interviewed your sister um, for this podcast, and we were talking about writing through sorrow and yeah. writing through some of the most difficult seasons of your life. And I have learned because when when the songs came on the best is yet to come, a lot of that record came through that most people know me for those that record came through some of the most horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I, I, stripping away yeah. of everything that was, that was comfort, that was security. Yeah. And I'm just, it's all gone. And I'm saying, Lord Jesus, you know, are, have you forgotten about like, where are you? And, yeah. and I have learned in those moments that that's when God does the greatest thing through you. Yes. When you're at the end of yourself, when you are really at this place 
spiritually and you just feel wrung out and yeah. you're just reaching to him saying, God, you've got to speak. You've, and you're not, you're not reaching to him. God, give me a song. Give me something that'll make me faint. No, it's God. I just need you. Yeah. And if you don't show up, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. And God will use a melody, a song, a scripture, yeah. but he always, this is one thing I've learned about God. He doesn't want to just bless me. He wants to bless others through me. Right. So whenever I go through something and I go through a different difficult season, I've learned to be aware of what God might be wanting to use this difficult moment that I've walked through to help somebody else. Is right. there a song? Is there a message? Right. Is there an encouragement? It could even be as simple as picking up the phone and calling somebody. It doesn't have to be a big production. Yeah. It could just be, man, I walked through a difficult situation with one of my kids and then I reach out to another mother who's going through something similar. Right. And so God's always taking you through things, not to just test you, not to make your life miserable, not to just show how great he is, but so that you can help somebody else. And yeah. the songs are going to do that for you on this record. The songs are going to do that. The songs are going to give you hope. And you're going to hear some of the pain that we went through, some yeah. of the frustration that we went through to declare that God is still good. He's on the throne. He's working things out in ways we can't see. Yeah. In ways you can't even imagine. Yeah. And to build that hope, to build that confidence again. You know, we went through a pandemic. We were isolated. We were shut down. Many that have watched, that are watching this, even the replay, you would say, we're still locked down. We're still going through it. Right. And, and, or you might say that was the worst, the least of my worries. My, the rest of the stuff that happened was worse. Or maybe you've experienced loss. Yeah. That's what I want to be able to encourage you with is, the, you know, a lot of times I do interviews and they'll say, I'm going to give you the last word. I'm going to give you the last word. Like, okay, <laughs> here's the last word. Yeah. But the, the reality is there is a last word and Jesus said it. Yeah. That he's working all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And, you know, Nicole, you've been through different seasons of your life, but it was all of it, the good and the bad, was to develop your calling. Right. And when you're called, you know, my mother, her grandma, always says, it's the calling that God's after. He wants, he wants you to get in what you're called to do and flow in that calling because when yeah. you do, the world opens up. It's not difficult. It's not a job or a chore. It, you just flow. And when you wrote this song, it was as if you were operating in your calling. Yeah, I hope so. No, no. So, well, tell <laughs> yeah. me about the calling, even of leading worship. How important is it to you to know that you're called to worship? And, and, and if you tried to do something outside of your calling, what do you think would happen? <laughs> well, I've tried it. Um, I, you know, I've been leading worship I guess kind of since like maybe 13, but really like 16, 17 years old is when I started. And, um, you know, with that responsibility comes a lot of pressure and, yeah. and comes a lot of, there's a, it, there's a weight that, that comes with leading worship, but really leading in any capacity, leading people in any capacity. Um, and especially because as Christians, we do live at a higher standard and yeah. there's a, a, you know, there's just a lot that comes with that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's extremely important to know if this is your calling or not, because, yes. you know, you really can't fake it for that long. And if you have tried faking it, you're just going to keep spinning your wheels until you're like, okay, hold on. I don't right. know if I'm called to this. Yeah. Maybe I'm called to ministry in a different capacity. Maybe I'm called to a different field of like, maybe literally, maybe I'm called to do a, a different job. Like, and God wants to use that because when you are on stage in any capacity, leading worship, preaching, yeah. um, whether it's kids leading kids ministry, leading, um, even if you're just doing the offering every week, literally, right. um, there is, you, you need to know that you're called to yes. that. Um, because like you were saying, I mean, I, I've never really ran from it. I've just had seasons where mm -hmm. I second guessed it and I doubted it. And I just really didn't want to do it. <laughs> and, right. And so like the moment, there's been a few moments here and there where I've been like, okay, God, please. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I love leading worship. I love singing. I love developing my gift. I love all of that. But when it comes to knowing that, like there are other people on the, yeah. the there are people on the other side of my voice that are like, they're listening to yeah. me. They're listening yeah. to what I'm saying. It's just, it's like I said, it's, there's a, there's a weight that comes with yes. that. Um, and I think if you are called that God will grace you 
to right. do to do exactly that. And with a with every calling, there comes a crushing. Yes. <laughs> and if you're not ready for it, well, you're never ready for it. Right. You have to just say yes to it. But even with, I've, I've always told uh, songwriters, I've told my girls this, I've learned this, that with everything God gives you, there comes a test. Yeah. Every song that I've ever written has come with a test. This this record came with a test. Yeah. So we write all these songs. We're all high five and we're all look at this. Everything you do is a blessing. And yeah. he fights for me and glorious 2.0 and all these things that we, you know, best days. And then things got more difficult yeah. after we wrote these songs. Yeah. Things got worse. Things well, got heavier. And this is just like a side note. We lost our family dog. We lost our 10 year. Uh, yeah. Our 10 year old golden retriever. Right in the middle of it all. And I, I wrote everything you do. I wrote that a few weeks before yeah. we lost her. And so if any, that's why this song is, is special, even if it's just for me alone, because yeah. I had to sing that song over me during that time. And I remember our first rehearsal, um, we had all the singers and all the band that came together for the first time and we were all on stage and whatever. And as soon as we started singing this song, I, I mean, literally we had just yeah. lost Lacey, like a few, I think two yeah. days before. Yeah. And we just had to go straight into rehearsals cause we did this in 30 days and we had already made the plans to have this recording. And I remember as soon as David started playing, I, lost I it I was that like was everything you do is like <laughs> it's just it it again it was something that I needed it was yeah, a but song it's a, that it's I a needed. test yes it's a test and we'll go through difficult situations and seasons and we'll be tested and we'll come out yeah tried in the fire but gold yeah. pure gold and I've loved this conversation that we've had I know we could go on and on and we'll come back and do this again uh, but I just hope that you were encouraged watching this listening to this this is an important podcast, I believe, because yeah. we're going to be talking about so many things, practical things, spiritual things, fun things, yeah. things about your health, things about, you know, scripture, guests, all those things. But what we talked about today, I believe, is really powerful and poignant for where we are right now. And if you're somebody that's a creative or somebody that, that really wants to give God your gift, just know that. Just say yes to God. He's walking you through you know, the situations that you're going through, he's going to yeah. walk you through it. He's going to show you the greatest blessing in your life is when you come through those situations, he's been with you the whole time. Yeah. So I thank you, Nicole, for joining Absolutely. me on this podcast. Thank you guys for watching. This is a lot of fun. You can find this podcast on the streaming platforms. We're going to put those on the screen. Uh, then you can follow us at Martha Munizzi on Twitter, on Instagram. We have our own YouTube channel. Epic Life has its own YouTube uh, channel and you can find Epic Life Church ORL, I think it's Ep Epic Life ORL. Facebook, Instagram, all of that. Follow us and connect with us. Nicole has her own platforms as well, social media. Yeah, you can find me at Nicole Joy or Nicole Munizzi on Spotify, Apple Music, right. YouTube. All of us. All of the Instagram, everything. We're there. So you guys can follow us, check out the music. Guys, thanks again so much for joining us today. I hope you were encouraged.